Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks so much for uh, letting me speak to you today. I just wanted to uh, spend some time with you talking about what it means to build an effective training strategy. Because in this day and age, having a training strategy in your company is something that's going to be extremely critical if you want to grow your workforce and your workplace, not only exponentially, as JP said, but also in, in a manner that's going to uh, reward you in the long term. You know, we have a situation over and over again where people always think short term when they think training. And, and we've really got to go beyond that. And it's so important to build an effective training strategy from the ground up. And today we're going to talk about how that's done. So to start off, let's define what a training strategy is. Ultimately, it is a mechanism that gives you all the tools, processes, and the infrastructure itself that's required to achieve employee competencies that your organization needs to be effective. And that's really how it breaks down. And any strategy that you build must align with an organization's corporate vision. And I can't say that enough. You're going to hear me say that over and over again today, in fact, because it's so important. You want to tie in the effort that you put through with your um, training strategy to something that is going to support the overall goals of your company. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists as part of your overall corporate operations. So basically, you've got to make sure you're focused. You have to have a clear direction. And the action plan that you utilize to implement your training has to be well constructed. So all kinds of supporting activities and resources are brought on board in order to achieve success when it comes to, a, to effectively implementing and designing a training strategy. And if these elements aren't present, then you've either got to create them or you've got to acquire them somehow because it's absolutely critical that you have them. You've got to have policies that are going to govern the way that you not only run your business, but also the way that you run the training effort within your business. And you've got to have a training team as well. Now, that doesn't mean you actually have to necessarily hire individuals whose sole function is to train. That's not what I'm getting at. What I am saying is that competencies within your organization should identify individuals that will definitely be able to step up to the role of trainer because you want to be able to bring those individuals uh, to bear when it's time to give the you know critical training that you need to the rest of your workforce. An often overlooked element is probably the simplest element. Do you actually have a place to conduct training and do you have the supplies that are needed? You know, I, I've, I've been in organizations where they conduct training without the benefit of even something as simple as a whiteboard and whiteboard markers. And you have to really ask yourself, you know, what, what is it that I need in order to make this most effective? So don't forget the simple stuff. In addition to that, you're going to need software. Now, that doesn't necessarily just mean the software that you might be training or things like Microsoft Office in order to be able to create um, you know, different kinds of uh, cheat sheets, instructions, assignments. I'm talking even about software that you'd be utilizing in order to be able to track your training efforts, um, whether that be a spreadsheet or something more robust. Here at Intellects, we utilize our own systems. Uh, that are running our, our uh, training management software that allows us to keep track of everything that we're doing from a training perspective. All of these things have to be in place because the idea here is to make things simple. It's to allow you to be able to construct and implement a training, training strategy as simply as possible. Um, metrics are important because anytime you engage in any kind of activity that's meant to improve your company or to ameliorate a situation, you have to know if you've made progress and metrics are the way that you do that. So give some thought to those before you start. What is it that you want to measure? What's important to your company? And in that second question, you really start to see how that alignment starts to happen, right? Because the metrics that you're going to use to measure the success of your training efforts are going to directly be related to what's important to your company from a corporate vision and corporate operation perspective. And you need to have reviews. And when I say reviews, I'm talking about reviews with the individuals that have gone through your training, with the individuals who, even if they were, in, they were not directly involved in training, they've benefited from your training. For example, department managers and, and uh, heads of divisions that are going to reap the benefits of a well-trained workforce. Are you going to be able to solicit feedback from them? If you don't have a mechanism in place to do that, you need to build one. And all of these things are critically important if you're going to start creating a training strategy. Now, you know, that's well said, but what if you don't believe that you need a training strategy? A lot of people, a lot of people will, will sometimes uh, debate me on this. They'll, they'll say, well, you know, what do I need a training strategy for in the first place? And, and it's a valid question. You know, I, I, never, I never scoff at that. I, I think that what's important is to educate people. And few are going to argue that a solid training strategy is critical to achieving corporate goals in the modern organization because 
if people come to you untrained, you, you do have to give them the skill sets and the competencies that they're going to need. So that's never the, the point of debate. But you would be shocked at how many companies never actually talk about building the training strategy itself. They don't want to get involved in the minutia or what they perceive to be the complexities of creating this training strategy that we've defined. And why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons, and I, I keep seeing them over and over and over again. And one of the main ones is that there's a stigma that's attached to training departments because they're seen as cost centers. You know, I, I run the training department here at Intellex, and we don't directly make the company any money, but we really do spend a lot of the company's money in terms of making sure that we have a well-trained workforce. Now, if we're a cost center and we're spending that money, where's that return? And that's the second point, is that there's difficulty in ascribing return on investment. Um, and this is that, that, that age-old catch-22 type of thing, which is if you have a workforce that's excelling in their roles, how much of that can you attribute to the training that they received versus maybe they're just a great fit for the role or maybe they just are superstars in one way or another? It's, it's an ongoing conversation, right? And it's going to be very, very difficult to ascribe ROI. And just because it's difficult to ascribe ROI doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that there's some difficulty. Now, there's also lack of time, resources, or skills to deliver training. And we see this again over and over in many different types of organizations because you have individuals that are, they're doing their own job. They have their own accountabilities to ask certain individuals to say, take a uh, half day out of your time and come over and train these individuals. It's a tall order. And there's a lot of situations where you don't want to pull your best salespeople off the floor to go and deliver sales training. You don't want to pull your best project managers off the floor in order to be able to go and deliver project management training. That's all valid. That's valid. And there's ways that we can work around that. The training strategy will help you to work around those types of difficulties. Plus, there's an inherent cost and an inherent difficulty to growing a training strategy from the ground up. You know, sometimes people will say to me, Anthony, what, what should I do? You know, what's the best approach? And there's no concrete answer that can be given. The best approach requires analysis. There isn't one package that you can put onto a shelf and sell it and say, here's your, your solution to get a training strategy going. Every company is different. Even similar companies in similar industries are still inherently and fundamentally different in terms of what their internal needs look like. Okay. The question that you need to ask yourself is, do you want to spend money training your staff or would you rather spend that money correcting the errors that are made by your staff? All right. And I know that that's sort of a blunt question to ask, but that's really the only question that matters. Because if you say that you would rather spend your money training your staff, then go ahead and spend it. Go ahead and spend it. And what I intend to do today is to give you some insight into, into how you can spend it effectively.